Seven Wonders of the World was a campaign started in 2000 to choose wonders of the world from a selection of 200 existing monuments. The popularity poll via free web-based voting and small amounts of telephone voting was led by Canadian Swiss Bernard Weber and organized by the new Seven Wonders Foundation, N7W, based in Zurich, Switzerland, with winners announced on 7 July 2007 in Lisbon at Estadio da Luz. The poll was considered unscientific, partly because it was possible for people to cast multiple votes. According to John Zogby, founder and current president CEO of the Utica, New York-based polling organization Zogby International, New Seven Wonders Foundation drove the largest poll on record. The program drew a wide range of official reactions. Some countries touted their finalist and tried to get more votes cast for it, while others downplayed or criticized the contest. After supporting the New Seven Wonders Foundation at the beginning of the campaign by providing advice on nominee selection, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, by its bylaws, having to record all and give equal status to World Heritage Sites, distanced itself from the undertaking in 2001 and again in 2007. The seven winners were chosen from 21 candidates, which had been whittled down from 77 choices by a panel in 2006. The new Seven Wonders Foundation, established in 2001, relied on private donations and the sale of broadcast rights and received no public funding. After the final announcement, New Seven Wonders said it did not earn anything from the exercise and barely recovered its investment. The Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu or the Pyramid of Cheops, is the oldest and largest of the pyramids in the Giza pyramid complex bordering present-day Giza in Greater Cairo, Egypt. It is the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world and the only one to remain largely intact. Egyptologists conclude that the pyramid was built as a tomb for the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu and estimate that it was built in the 26th century BC during a period of around 27 years. Initially standing at 146.5 meters, 481 feet, the Great Pyramid was the tallest man made structure in the world for more than 3,800 years. Throughout history, the majority of the smooth white limestone casing was removed, which lowered the pyramid's height to the present 138.5 meters, 454.4 feet. What is seen today is the underlying core structure. The base was measured to be about 230.3 meters, 755.6 feet, square, giving a volume of roughly 2.6 million cubic meters, 92 million cubic feet, which includes an internal hillock. The dimensions of the pyramid, expressed in ancient Egyptian units of measurement, were 280 cubits high, a base length of 440 cubits. The Great Pyramid was built by quarrying an estimated 2.3 million large blocks weighing 6 million tons total. The majority of stones are not uniform in size or shape and are only roughly dressed. The outside layers were bound together by mortar. Primarily local limestone from the Giza Plateau was used. Other blocks were imported by boat down the Nile, white limestone from Tura for the casing, and granite blocks from Aswan, weighing up to 80 tons, for the king's chamber structure. There are three known chambers inside the Great Pyramid. The lowest was cut into the bedrock, upon which the pyramid was built, but remained unfinished. The so-called Queen's Chamber and King's Chamber, which contains a granite sarcophagus, are higher up within the pyramid structure. Khufu's vizier, Himiunu, also called Heman, is believed by some to be the architect of the Great Pyramid. Many varying scientific and alternative hypotheses attempt to explain the exact construction techniques. The funerary complex around the pyramid consisted of two mortuary temples connected by a causeway, one close to the pyramid and one near the Nile, tombs for the immediate family and court of Khufu, including three smaller pyramids for Khufu's wives, an even smaller satellite pyramid and five buried solar barges. The Great Pyramid has been determined to be about 4,600 years old by two principal approaches, indirectly, through its attribution to Khufu in his chronological age, based on archaeological and textual evidence, and directly, via radiocarbon dating of organic material found in the pyramid and included in its mortar. Mortar was used generously in the Great Pyramid's construction. In the mixing process, ashes from fires were added to the mortar, organic material that could be extracted and radiocarbon dated. A total of 46 samples of the mortar were taken in 1984 and 1995, making sure they were clearly inherent to the original structure and could not have been incorporated at a later date. The results were calibrated to 2871 to 2604 BC. 
the old wood problem is thought to be mainly responsible for the 100 to 300 year offset since the age of the organic material was determined, not when it was last used. A reanalysis of the data gave a completion date for the pyramid between 2620 and 2484 BC, based on the younger samples. So this is the all information about the Great Pyramids of Giza, hope you liked it. The Great Wall of China is a series of fortifications that were built across the historical northern borders of ancient Chinese states and Imperial China as protection against various nomadic groups from the Eurasian steppe. Several walls were built from as early as the 7th century BC, with selective stretches later joined together by Qin Shi Huang BC, the first emperor of China. Little of the Qin Wall remains. Later on, many successive dynasties have built and maintained multiple stretches of border walls. The most well-known sections of the wall were built by the Ming Dynasty (1368–1644). Apart from defense, other purposes of the Great Wall have included border controls, allowing the imposition of duties on goods transported along the Silk Road, regulation or encouragement of trade, and the control of immigration and emigration. Furthermore, the defensive characteristics of the Great Wall were enhanced by the construction of watchtowers, troop barracks, garrison stations, signaling capabilities through the means of smoke or fire, and the fact that the path of the Great Wall also served as a transportation corridor. The frontier walls built by different dynasties have multiple courses. Collectively, they stretch from Liaodong in the east to Lop Lake in the west, from the present day Sino Russian border in the north to Tau River, Tahoe, in the south, along an arc that roughly delineates the edge of the Mongolian steppe, spanning over 20,000 kilometers, 12,000 mi, in total. Today, the defensive system of the Great Wall is generally recognized as one of the most impressive architectural feats in history. The Chinese were already familiar with the techniques of wall building by the time of the spring and autumn period between the 8th and 5th centuries BC. During this time and the subsequent Warring States period, the states of Qin, Wei, Zhao, Kai, Han, Yan, and Zhongshan all constructed extensive fortifications to defend their own borders. Built to withstand the attack of small arms such as swords and spears, these walls were made mostly of stone, or by stamping earth and gravel between board frames. The Great Wall of the Han is the longest of all walls, from Mamidu near Yumengwen to Liaodong King Zheng of Qin conquered the last of his opponents and unified China as the first emperor of the Qin dynasty, Qin Shi Huang, in 221 BC. Intending to impose centralized rule and prevent the resurgence of feudal lords, he ordered the destruction of the sections of the walls that divided his empire among the former states. To position the empire against the Xiongnu people from the north, however, he ordered the building of new walls to connect the remaining fortifications along the empire's northern frontier. Build and move on was a central guiding principle in constructing the wall, implying that the Chinese were not erecting a permanently fixed border. Transporting the large number of materials required for construction was difficult, so builders always tried to use local resources. Stones from the mountains were used over mountain ranges, while rammed earth was used for construction in the plains. There are no surviving historical records indicating the exact length and course of the Qin walls. Most of the ancient walls have eroded away over the centuries, and very few sections remain today. The human cost of the construction is unknown, but it has been estimated by some authors that hundreds of thousands of workers died building the Qin Wall. Later, the Han, the Northern Dynasties, and the Sui all repaired, rebuilt, or expanded sections of the Great Wall at great cost to defend themselves against Northern invaders. The Tang and Song Dynasties did not undertake any significant effort in the region. Non-Han dynasties also built their border walls, the Shanbei ruled Northern Wei, the Khitan ruled Liao, Jurchen Jin, and the Tangut established Western Xia, who ruled vast territories over northern China throughout centuries, all constructed defensive walls, but those were located much to the north of the other Great Walls as we know it, within China's province of Inner Mongolia, and in Mongolia itself. The notion that the wall can be seen from the moon, 385,000 kilometers, 239,000 miles, is a well-known but implausible myth. Any of the earliest known references to the myth, 
that the Great Wall can be seen from the moon appears in a letter written in 1754 by the English antiquary William Stukeley. Stukeley wrote that this mighty wall Hadrian's Wall of four score miles 130 kilometers in length is only exceeded by the Chinese Wall, which makes a considerable figure upon the terrestrial globe and may be discerned at the moon. The claim was also mentioned by Henry Norman in 1895, where he states besides its age, it enjoys the reputation of being the only work of human hands on the globe visible from the moon. The issue of canals on Mars was prominent in the late 19th century and may have led to the belief that long thin objects were visible from space. The claim that the Great Wall is visible from the moon also appears in 1932's Ripley's Believe It or Not strip. In 2016, archaeologists using satellite imagery and drones discovered a very large, previously unknown monumental structure whose beginnings were tentatively dated to about 150 BC, the time when the Nabataeans initiated their public building program. It is located outside the main area of the city, at the foot of Jabal and Mare, and about 0.5 me, 0.80 kilometers, south of the city center, but is facing east, not towards the city, and has no visible relationship to it. The structure consists of a huge, 184 by 161 feet, 56 by 49 meters, platform, with a monumental staircase along its eastern side. The large platform enclosed a slightly smaller one, topped with a comparatively small building, 28 by 28 feet, 8.5 by 8.5 meters, which was facing east toward the staircase. The structure, second in size only to the monastery complex, probably had a ceremonial function of which not even a speculative explanation has yet been offered by the researchers. Most visitors stay in Petra Town's many international standard hotels with reasonably short walking access to Petra. There are also more traditional homestays and lodgings available, even the chance to stay in a cave. Visitors sometimes include those who have hiked or raced across Jordan's southern deserts to get to Petra. By 7000 BC, some of the earliest recorded farmers had settled in Bidha, a pre pottery Neolithic settlement just north of Petra. Petra is listed in Egyptian campaign accounts and the Amarna letters as Pel, Sela, or Ser. The Colosseum is an oval amphitheater in the center of the city of Rome, Italy, just east of the Roman Forum, and is the largest ancient amphitheater ever built, and is still the largest standing amphitheater in the world today, despite its age. Construction began under the Emperor Vespasian, R6979 AD, in 72, and was completed in 80 AD under his successor and heir, Titus, R7981. Further modifications were made during the reign of Domitian, R8196. The three emperors that were patrons of the work are known as the Flavian dynasty, and the amphitheater was named the Flavian Amphitheater, Latin, Amphitheatrum Flavium, Italian, Amphitetro Flavio by later classicists and archaeologists for its association with their family name, Flavius. The Colosseum is built of travertine limestone, tough, volcanic rock, and brick-faced concrete. 
The Colosseum could hold an estimated 50,000 to 80,000 spectators at various points in its history, having an average audience of some 65,000. It was used for gladiatorial contests and public spectacles including animal hunts, executions, reenactments of famous battles, and dramas based on Roman mythology, and briefly mock sea battles. The building ceased to be used for entertainment in the early medieval era. It was later reused for such purposes as housing, workshops, quarters for a religious order, a fortress, a quarry, and a Christian shrine. Although substantially ruined because of earthquakes and stone robbers, for spolia, the Colosseum is still an iconic symbol of Imperial Rome and was listed as one of the NEW7 wonders of the world. It is one of Rome's most popular tourist attractions and also has links to the Roman Catholic Church, as each Good Friday the Pope leads a torquelet way of the cross procession that starts in the area around the Colosseum. The Colosseum is also depicted on the Italian version of the 5 cent euro coin. The site chosen was a flat area on the floor of a low valley between the Caelian, Esquiline, and Palatine hills, through which a canalized stream ran as well as an artificial lake marsh. By the 2nd century BC, the area was densely inhabited. It was devastated by the Great Fire of Rome in 64 AD, following which Nero seized much of the area to add to his personal domain. He built the grandiose Domus Aurea on the site, in front of which he created an artificial lake surrounded by pavilions, gardens, and porticos. The existing Aqua Claudia aqueduct was extended to supply water to the area, and the gigantic bronze colossus of Nero was set up nearby at the entrance to the Domus Aurea. Cross section from a lexicon Durgis Anton Technic, 1904. Although the colossus was preserved, much of the Domus Aurea was torn down. The lake was filled in and the land reused as the location for the new Flavian amphitheater. Gladiatorial schools and other support buildings were constructed nearby within the former grounds of the Domus Aurea. Vespasian's decision to build the Colosseum on the site of Nero's lake can be seen as a populist gesture of returning to the people and area of the city which Nero had appropriated for his own use. In contrast to many other amphitheaters, which were on the outskirts of a city, the Colosseum was constructed in the city center, in effect, placing it both symbolically and precisely at the heart of Rome. Construction was funded by the opulent spoils taken from the Jewish temple after the First Jewish-Roman War in 70 C led to the Siege of Jerusalem. According to a reconstructed inscription found on the site, the Emperor Vespasian ordered this new amphitheater to be erected from his general share of the booty. It is often assumed that Jewish prisoners of war were brought back to Rome and contributed to the massive workforce needed for the construction of the amphitheater, but there is no ancient evidence for that. It would, nonetheless, be commensurate with Roman practice to add humiliation to the defeated population. Along with this free source of unskilled labor, teams of professional Roman builders, engineers, artists, painters, and decorators undertook the more specialized tasks necessary for building the Colosseum. The Colosseum was constructed with several different materials, wood, limestone, tuff, tiles, cement, and mortar. During the 16th and 17th centuries, church officials sought a productive role for the Colosseum. Pope Sixtus V, 1585-1590, planned to turn the building into a wool factory to provide employment for Rome's prostitutes, though this proposal fell through with his premature death. In 1671 Cardinal Altieri authorized its use for bullfights, a public outcry caused the idea to be hastily abandoned. Allied troops consult a guidebook outside the Colosseum after liberation in 1944 and 1749. Pope Benedict XIV endorsed the view that the Colosseum was a sacred site where early Christians had been martyred. He forbade the use of the Colosseum as a quarry and consecrated the building to the Passion of Christ and installed Stations of the Cross, declaring it sanctified by the blood of the Christian martyrs who perished there, see significance in Christianity. However, there is no historical evidence to support Benedict's claim, nor is there even any evidence that anyone before the 16th century suggested this might be the case. The Catholic Encyclopedia concludes that there are no historical grounds for the supposition, other than the reasonably plausible conjecture that some of the many martyrs may well have been dot interior of the Colosseum, Rome, 1832, by Thomas Cole, showing the stations of the cross around the arena and the extensive vegetation. Later, popes initiated various stabilization and restoration projects projects, removing the extensive vegetation which had overgrown this structure and threatened to damage it further. The facade was reinforced with triangular brick wedges in 1807 and 1827, and the interior was repaired in 1831, 1846 and in the 1930s. 
the arena substructure was partly excavated in 1810, 1814 and 1874, and was fully exposed under Benito Mussolini in the 1930s. The Colosseum is today one of Rome's most popular tourist attractions, receiving millions of visitors annually. The effects of pollution and general deterioration over time prompted a major restoration program carried out between 1993 and 2000, at a cost of 40 billion Italian lire, 19.3 million dollar 20.6 million euros at 2000 prices. Chichen Itza was a large pre-Columbian city built by the Maya people of the Terminal Classic period. The archaeological site is located in Tinum Municipality, Yucatan State, Mexico. Chichen Itza was a major focal point in the northern Maya lowlands from the Late Classic, CAD 600-900, through the Terminal Classic, CAD 800-900, and into the early portion of the post-classic period, CAD 900-1200. The site exhibits a multitude of architectural styles, reminiscent of styles seen in central Mexico, and of the Puyuc and Chin styles of the northern Maya lowlands. The presence of central Mexican styles was once thought to have been representative of direct migration or even conquest from central Mexico, but most contemporary interpretations view the presence of these non-Maya styles more as the result of cultural diffusion. Chichen Itza was one of the largest Maya cities, and it was likely to have been one of the mythical great cities or Tullans referred to in later Mesoamerican literature. The city may have had the most diverse population in the Maya world, a factor that could have contributed to the variety of architectural styles at the site. The ruins of Chichen Itza are federal property, and the site's stewardship is maintained by Mexico's Instituto Nacional de Antropología e Historia, National Institute of Anthropology and History. The land under the monuments had been privately owned until 29 March 2010, when it was purchased by the state of Yucatan. Chichen Itza is one of the most visited archaeological sites in Mexico, with over 2.6 million tourists. In 2017, Chichen Itza was a major economic power in the northern Maya lowlands during its apogee. Participating in the waterborne Circum Peninsular trade route through its port site of Isla Cerritos on the north coast, Chichen Itza was able to obtain locally unavailable resources from distant areas, such as obsidian from central Mexico and gold from southern Central America. Between AD 900 and 1050, Chichen Itza expanded to become a powerful regional capital controlling north and central Yucatan. It established as Los Cerritos as a trading port. The layout of the Chichen Itza site core, developed during its earlier phase of occupation, between 750 and 980. Its final layout was developed after 980, and the 10th century saw the rise of the city as a regional capital, controlling the area from central Yucatan to the north coast, with its power extending down the east and west coasts of the peninsula. 20, the earliest hieroglyphic date discovered at Chichen Itza, is equivalent to 832 AD, while the last known date was recorded in the Asario Temple in 998. The late classic city was centered upon the area to the southwest of the Zdolok Senate, with the main architecture represented by the substructures now underlying the Las Manjas and Observatorio, and the basal platform upon which they were built. Chichen Itza rose to regional prominence toward the end of the early classic period, roughly 600 AD. It was, however, toward the end of the late classic and into the early part of the terminal classic that the site became a major regional capital, centralizing and dominating political, socio-cultural, economic, and ideological life in the northern Maya lowlands. 
the ascension of Chichen Itza roughly correlates with the decline and fragmentation of the major centers of the southern Maya lowlands. As Chichen Itza rose to prominence, the cities of Yaxuna, to the south, and Koba, to the east, were suffering decline. These two cities had been mutual allies, with Yaxuna dependent upon Koba. At some point in the 10th century, Koba lost a significant portion of its territory, isolating Yaxuna, and Chichen Itza may have directly contributed to the collapse of both cities. Chichen Itza entered the popular imagination in 1843, with the book Incidents of Travel in Yucatan by John Lloyd Stevens, with illustrations by Frederick Catherwood. The book recounted Stevens' visit to Yucatan and his tour of Maya cities, including Chichen Itza. The book prompted other explorations of the city. In 1860, Desire Charney surveyed Chichen Itza and took numerous photographs that he published in Sites et Ruins Americains, 1863. Visitors to Chichen Itza during the 1870s and 1880s came with photographic equipment and recorded more accurately the condition of several buildings. 32 in 1875, Augustus Laplongeon and his wife Alice Dixon Laplongeon visited Chichen and excavated a statue of a figure on its back, knees drawn up, upper torso raised on its elbows with a plate on its stomach. Augustus Laplongeon called it Chakmul, later renamed Chakmul, which has been the term to describe all types of this statuary found in Mesoamerica. Tiebert Mailer and Alfred Maudsley explored Chichen in the 1880s and both spent several weeks at the site and took extensive photographs. Maudsley published the first long-form description of Chichen Itza in his book, Biologia Centrali Americana. The Kukulkan Temple, photographed by Tiebert Mailer, 1892 in 1894 The United States Consul to Yucatan, Edward Herbert Thompson, purchased the Hacienda Chichen, which included the ruins of Chichen Itza. For 30 years, Thompson explored the ancient city. His discoveries included the earliest dated carving upon a lintel in the temple of the initial series and the excavation of several graves in the Asario, High Priest's Temple. Thompson is most famous for dredging the Senate Sagrado, Sacred Senate, from 1904 to 1910, where he recovered artifacts of gold, copper, and carved jade, as well as the first ever examples of what were believed to be pre-Columbian Maya cloth and wooden weapons. Thompson shipped the bulk of the artifacts to the Peabody Museum at Harvard University. In 1913, the Carnegie Institution accepted the proposal of archaeologist Sylvanus G. Morley and committed to conduct long term archaeological research at Chichen Itza. The Mexican Revolution and the following government instability, as well as World War I, delayed the project by a decade. In 1923, the Mexican government awarded the Carnegie Institution a 10 year permit, later extended another 10 years, to allow U.S. archaeologists to conduct extensive excavation and restoration of Chichen Itza. Carnegie researchers excavated and restored the Temple of Warriors and the Caracol, among other major buildings. At the same time, the Mexican government excavated and restored El Castillo, Temple of Cuculcan, and the Great Ball Court. Excavations next to the Temple of Cuculcan, El Castillo, began in 2009. In 1926, the Mexican government charged Edward Thompson with theft, claiming he stole the artifacts from the Senate Sagrado and smuggled them out of the country. The government seized the Hacienda Chichen. Thompson, who was in the United States at the time, never returned to Yucatan. He wrote about his research and investigations of the Maya culture in the book People of the Serpent published in 1932. He died in New Jersey in 1935. In 1944 the Mexican Supreme Court ruled that Thompson had broken no laws and returned Chichen Itza to his heirs. The Thompsons sold the Hacienda to tourism pioneer Fernando Barbachano Pion. There have been two later expeditions to recover artifacts from the Senate Sagrado in 1961 and 1967. The first was sponsored by National Geographic and the second by private interests. Both projects were supervised by Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, INA. INA has conducted an ongoing effort to excavate and restore other monuments in the archaeological zone, including the Acerio, a cab zip, and several buildings in Chichen Viejo, Old Chichen. In 2009, to investigate construction that predated El Castillo, Yucatec archaeologists began excavations adjacent to El Castillo under the direction of Rafael, Rach, Cobus, 